So this was a, a phase three randomized, randomized imaging control trial uh, evaluating the impact of PSMA PET CT on salvage radiotherapy planning for prostate cancer. Uh, this trial itself um, has not reached its primary endpoint. These are secondary endpoints that I'll be reporting on. It enrolled 193 gentlemen with prostate cancer uh, with 103 randomized to the intervention arm, 90 randomized to control arm. What we saw was, well, what we looked for here was the impact on management. The overall goal of this trial is to look at salvage therapy, salvage radiotherapy success rate with the implementation of PSMA PET, a new PSMA, a new prostate cancer imaging modality um, that's being implemented across the prostate cancer staging schemas. Uh, the issue with the implementation of PSMA PET is while it's a highly sensitive imaging modality, it has not been fully not to say validated, but understood in its context in numerous staging settings and how those new findings, which are reclassifying previously conventionally staged patients, um, how those new findings and these new categorizations are going to be actually impacting the way we treat, uh, given we have data of the same patients on these older randomized trials. The results from this trial um, and the final impact on management was excellent. It realigned and recapitulated our previous hypothesis on that we would have a, a large impact on overall planning. Uh, what we did with this trial that was more likely to... Uh, the the challenge, but also benefit to this trial is that we allowed um, changes to be made on an individual referring physician basis. Uh, so while it was not standardized it, the way in which they'd escalate or de-escalate, we also felt that would more truly recapitulate how you in practice are going to be using these results. Um, having a strict set of guidelines might go against how the RTOG trials, et cetera, change. And they did change during the trial. It went on for a few years. We had newer recommendations for the inclusion of pelvic radiotherapy fields, um, inclusion and exclusion of ADT depending on the patient's risk strata. And so while for us, it, it's added a little bit of complexity as we interpret results and recategorize patients, we also found that it's likely to be a much better um, overall representation of how your practice might look later, um, trying to implement these results as well. We felt that um, the rigid guideline or the rigid structure of doing that would not truly reflect the complexity of, of decision-making that has to be undergone on the patient side, um, given the number of toxicities, effects of quality of life. Uh, so seeing this huge change in management, we strongly controlled for that in our control arm. We have all of these patient related decisions and physician related decisions um, controlled and outlined. And hopefully we'll be seeing that soon in one of our upcoming publications where we put a really granular look on why changes were made in a patient plan and beyond the PSMA PET and how what those changes actually look like. So we have some very detailed tables and outlines of it. Um, so I think it's a really excellent representation of, and allow and once our uh, primary endpoint comes out, it'll really allow us to piece together the full story for these patients.